Good morning, everybody. That was lame. Good morning, everybody. Much better. <laughs> um, I know it's not a great subject, but we could at least try to be happy. Okay. Um, I'm here to quickly, in my short 15, 20 minutes, give you a starting place. A lot of people have financial problems and don't realize, besides trying to work out the issue, you actually have some rights in case some things go wrong. Also, what happens a lot is some problems come up that you did not create, and then you have to unfortunately deal with fixing them. And having gone through some of it myself, I understand how you feel. I've been an identity theft victim. I've been harassed by debt collectors. collectors. I've had to fight with banks about mistakes that they've made. I've had to fight with my student loan company when they made a mistake. So I've experienced a lot of what I deal with on a regular basis for my clients. They have accounts on their credit report that they have no idea how it got there. I've never had a Bank of America credit card, and I have no idea why it's on my credit report. And often I'm looking at them at the first point going, I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> You just walked in. It's going to take me a little time to figure it out. Everybody ready? Yes. I thought we figured it out. Everybody ready? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Credit reporting. 80% of credit reports contain some kind of mistake. 80%. So there's only 20 of us in the room who don't have an error. The rest of us have some mistake on our credit report. And it's not necessarily your fault. But the problem is, the 80% of us that do, we have a lot of problems. We have problems getting jobs because of those mistakes. We're having problems in our homes with our marriage. We're getting denied credit. We're having problems getting insurance because of the 80% of those mistakes, which is causing us problems. For those of you who have not yet left your jobs, one of the things you, and I know with the credit crunch, it's going to be a little harder these days, but if you are still thinking about going on your own and you have a job, like you're working for a firm or something, now is the time to tell the bank, you know, I'm going to be opening up my own practice, but I'd like to get a line of credit. Because what they'll do is they're going to base it off your income. You have income right now. You have a job. So you are applying for a line of credit now. They're using your current income and your current credit situation to determine whether or not you can get it. When you open up your practice, at first, you don't have any history, you don't have any track record, you don't have any income. It's a lot harder to get a line of credit. It usually starts with somebody coming to your house and handing you paperwork that you look at and you go, this looks foreign, I have no idea what this is, I don't even know what it says. And it's a summons and a complaint. And it means that somebody has served you with a lawsuit. And a lot of times, people get the paperwork and don't understand it, throw it away, throw it aside. If you're not sure, get somebody else to look at it right away because the minute you are handed that paperwork, the clock starts ticking against you. So open your mail. If you get something stuck in your door, open it up. A lot of people have unfortunately not done anything about being sued and they end up with judgments and then you got the whole security clearance issue. Don't not act. Not acting is the worst thing to do. A lot of times people think it's a joke or don't act because the name of the company that's suing you is not any creditor that you ever recognize. And that's because these days a lot of creditors sell the debt to collection agency. And so the name on the lawsuit is the collection agency. And you think, I don't know who they are, ABC, I've never heard of them. And you think it doesn't apply to you. It does. ABC bought your debt from your original creditor. So don't ignore it. Obviously, if you see a mistake and an error, you need to deal with it. Don't assume that it's going to get fixed on its own. And so if something comes up that's a problem, you need to start communicating. And you need to start communicating right away with not just the creditor that you see, but also the credit bureau. <laughs> but by the time that they finally stopped the account, they had, the person had taken out all $5,000 of his money. All his checks had started bouncing. He was incurring all kinds of fees, all kinds of domino effects. Because you know when the checks bounce, now the credit card company goes, oh, you're late, and we're adding a fee, and now we're going to bump up your interest rate, and so I continue on the domino effect. So it's not just about the money that's missing. It's about the whole series of problems that comes behind it, and how much problem it takes to fix all of the dominoes behind it. You have to get comfortable about talking about money with your clients. You just have to. That's the nature of running your own practice. And you have to feel that you're worth it, and that it's okay to say to your client, look, 
we had this conversation about what it was going to cost, what the hourly rate was when you came in. I understand that times are hard, but at the same time, you know, I can't pay the light bill with an IOU. So we need to talk about what we're going to do. But don't wait till it's five thousand dollars because then it's too late. You spent five thousand dollars of your time that you're not getting back, and that's five thousand dollars of time that you could have been working on something else that you would have gotten paid for. Because when you make the phone call, you are at the mercy of the credit bureau's employee putting that information in the system correctly. They are interpreting what you have said. So you may say A, B, and C, and that employee has typed in D, E, F. Go in and represent yourself, which is fine. You need to be aware that a lot of times what they're going to offer you when they say a settlement instead of having a hearing is something called a consent judgment. And it is the equivalent of having a regular judgment against you. It will show up on your credit report. It will allow them to garnish your wages without them having to have a trial. Because you're basically saying you're consenting to them winning without making them prove it. 